Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to Learn About Medical Channel. In the last session, we have discussed about the glycolysis. In this session, we are going to discuss about the gluconeogenesis. That is gluconeogenesis. That is gluconeogenesis, glucose, glucose, and neo means new, and genesis means genesis means formation. Genesis means formation. That is gluconeogenesis means gluconeogenesis means it is the formation of it is the formation of glucose. The name itself is indicating that is the formation of glucose from the that is the formation of the glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors from non-carbohydrate precursors. Okay, that is from the non-carbohydrate precursors. The formation of the glucose from the non-carbohydrate precursors. This is nothing but gluconeogenesis. Then, what are the non-carbohydrate precursors? Here I am going to write the the non-carbohydrate precursors. Non-carbohydrate, non-carbohydrate precursors. From the non-carbohydrate precursors, we are going to synthesize the glucose. That is, first one is pyruvate, and second one is lactate, and third one is propionyl CoA, propionyl CoA, and fourth one is propionyl CoA and glycerol. And fifth one is glucogenic amino acids. Glucogenic amino acids. Okay, these are the non-carbohydrate precursors. These that is pyruvate, lactate, propanyl CoA, and glycerol and glucogenic amino acids. These all are the non-carbohydrate precursors. from these non carbohydrate precursors we are going to form we are going to form glucose we are going to form glucose this is nothing but gluconeogenesis the gluconeogenesis is nothing but it is the formation of the glucose it is the formation of the glucose from the non carbohydrate precursor okay then what are the non carbohydrate precursors that is the pyruvate lactate propanyl coa glycerol and glucogenic amino acids from these non carbohydrate precursors we are going to form the glucose this is the process is called as gluconeogenesis okay after this we move on to the the important points to remember about the gluconeogenesis that is important point what are the important points that is the first one is the first one is that the gluconeogenesis it is not the complete reversible of the glycogen it is not it is not complete reverse of glycolysis complete reverse of glycolysis that is gluconeogenesis it is not the complete reverse of glycolysis but it is the reverse of only the whatever the three irreversible steps are in the glycolysis they has to be reversed that is it is reversed only the three irreversible steps only the three irreversible steps of the glycolysis only the three irreversible steps of the glycolysis they has to be reversed they has to be reversed with four enzymes with the help of four enzymes with the help of four enzymes that is it is not the complete reverse of the glycolysis but the three irreversible steps of the glycolysis they has to be reversed by the four enzymes and third point for the third part is the so one mole of glucose for the synthesis of one mole of glucose one mole of glucose six atp are needed six atp are needed for the synthesis of one mole of glucose six atp are needed and then we move on to the source of glucose what is the source that is source of glucose 
that is after the depletion of glycogen after after the depletion of glucose sorry after the depletion of glycogen after the depletion of glycogen that is that is what after the after 16 to 18 hours of meal after the 16 to 18 hours of meal we are going to get glucose that is the good source of the glucose and then we move on to the these are the important points to remember about the gluconeogenesis after this we move on to the the three irreversible steps of the glycolysis they have to be irreversible that is the first step third step and the ninth step the first step of the glycolysis and the third step of the glycolysis and the ninth step of the glycolysis that is the first step is glucose is get converted into glucose six phosphate which is also the irreversible step of the glycolysis and third step is fructose one fructose six phosphate fructose six phosphate is get converted into fructose one comma six bisphosphate this is also the irreversible step of the glycolysis that is third step and ninth step that is pb that is pb phosphoenol pyruvate is get converted into pyruvate that, that is pb is get converted into pyruvate these three are the irreversible steps of the glycolysis but the gluconeogenesis means these irreversible steps first second first second and third that is first step of the glycolysis third step of the glycolysis and ninth step of the glycolysis we have to reverse these with the help of these three irreversible steps we have to reverse these with the help of four important enzymes four enzymes we have to reverse this that is first one is pyruvate to pp and uh, uh, fructose 1 comma 6 this passes to the fructose 6 passes and glucose 6 passes to the glucose these are the irreversible steps we have to reverse with the help of four enzymes this is nothing but gluconeogenesis that is that opposite of the glycolysis that opposite of the glycolysis we have to reverse these irreversible steps into reversible that is in that this is the gluconeogenesis and we have to discuss about the site for the gluconeogenesis that is site site for the gluconeogenesis that is cytoplasma that is cytoplasma cytoplasma and as well as mitochondria cytoplasma and mitochondria the site for the glucose sorry site for the gluconeogenesis is cytoplasma as well as the mitochondria and uh, good good source source is that is tissue sorry we can call main tissue for the gluconeogenesis main tissue main tissue for gluconeogenesis main tissue for the gluconeogenesis is that is liver and renal cortex that is kidney renal cortex these two are the main tissues of our body which are for the gluconeogenesis okay this is site is cytoplasm as well as the mitochondria and main tissue is liver as well as the renal cortex that is in the kidney okay okay after this we move on to the that are whatever the three steps of the glycolysis we have to reverse it. that is pyruvate to pp and fructose fructose 6 this passes to the fructose 6 passes and glucose 6 passes to the glucose in that we have to first discuss about the this one that is pyruvate to pp okay first one is glucose synthesis of glucose from pyruvate from the pyruvate that is pyruvate it undergoes carboxylation reaction that is carboxylation carboxylation it undergoes the carboxylation reaction to produce oxaloacetate it produces oxaloacetate this is the carboxylation reaction that is the pyruvate it undergoes carboxylation it produces oxaloacetate with the help of enzyme 
pyruvate carboxylase pyruvate carboxylase carboxylase pyruvate is get converted into oxalic acetate with the help of enzyme pyruvate carboxylase this is the carboxylation reaction carboxylation reaction means carboxylation means it is the addition of the carbon dioxide carboxylation means addition of carbon dioxide and decarboxylation means decarboxylation means removal of carbon dioxide here we have to remember that is we have to add a b and c a means we have to add here atp to this reaction and b means biotin biotin to this reaction and c means carbon dioxide because this is the carboxylation reaction carboxylation reaction means we have to add the carbon dioxide atp is the energy source and biotin it is act as a coenzyme here and this is the carbon dioxide is added to this reaction that is because of this is the carboxylation reaction and after that this oxaloacetate is get converted into cep that is oxaloacetate is get converted into cep cep means phospho phospho e means enol phospho enol pyruvate phospho enol pyruvate oxaloacetate is get converted into phospho enol pyruvate this is the reaction decarboxylation reaction decarboxylation this is decarboxylation that is decarboxylation reaction decarboxylation means removal of carbon dioxide removal of carbon dioxide this reaction this step includes that is gtp this is needed gtp has energy source that the oxaloacetate is get converted into pep that is this is the decarboxylation reaction decarboxylation reaction means removal of carbon dioxide this reaction needs gtp with the help of enzyme the enzyme is pep that is phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase carboxykinase this is the enzyme and after this this oxaloacetate this oxaloacetate which is impermeable to the mitochondria this oxaloacetate is impermeable 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 to mitochondria to the mitochondria that's why this the oxaloacetate which is impermeable to the mitochondria that's why this oxaloacetate is transported into the cytoplasma that's why this oxaloacetate is get converted into malate this oxaloacetate is get converted into malate with the help of enzyme malate malate dehydrogenase because of this oxaloacetate is impermeable to the mitochondrial membrane that's why this oxaloacetate is converted into malate with the help of enzyme malate dehydrogenase here mad plus is get converted into madh plus h plus and this again malate is get converted into malate is get converted into oxaloacetate oxaloacetate which is in the this conversion it is in the cytosol that is in the cytosol that is the oxaloacetate is this is impermeable to the mitochondria that's why it is converted into malate that malate is converted into oxaloacetate in the cytosol this oxaloacetate again converted into the phosphoenol pyruvate this is this phosphoenol pyruvate it is going to be converted into the glucose this is going to be converted into the glucose this is the Ninth step of the glycolysis that is pyruvate. First final pyruvate is get converted into pyruvate in the glycolysis. Here we have to reverse. We have to reverse that uh, reaction that is pyruvate to the PEP. That is pyruvate to the PEP with the help of two enzymes. That is pyruvate carboxylase, pyruvate carboxylase and PEP carboxykinase. These two enzymes are helpful for the conversion of pyruvate to the glucose. Okay, this is the first step. And then we move on to the third step. That is third step of glycolysis. In that, we are going to synthesize. That is fructose one comma fructose fructose one comma six bisphosphate fructose one comma six bisphosphate fructose one comma six bisphosphate. It should reverse. that is the fructose 6 phosphate is get converted into fructose 1,6 bisphosphate in the glycolysis we have to reverse that reaction that is fructose 1,6 bisphosphate is get converted into fructose 
फ्रुक्टोज सिक्स पास है विद द हेल्प ऑफ एंजाइम फ्रुक्टोज वन कामा सिक्स डिस पास पटेज डिस पास पटेज एंजाइम That is fructose one comma six. This phosphate is get converted into fructose six phosphate with the help of enzyme fructose one comma six. This phosphate, phosphate is AFP. What happens? You know, this enzyme it is going to be break down the that the phosphate group. It is going to be release the that phosphate group and forms one phosphate. There are two phosphate groups are there in this. One phosphate group it is released by this enzyme. It becomes fructose six phosphate. It is going to be released organic phosphate. This is the third step, which is irreversible in the irreversible in the glycolysis, but it is reversible in the gluconeogenesis. This is the third step of glycolysis, and the first step, the first step of glycolysis, which is irreversible, that is glucose is get converted into glucose six phosphate, but in this gluconeogenesis we have to reverse it. That is glucose. Glucose six phosphate, glucose six phosphate is get converted into it should reverse, it should reverse into glucose with the help of enzyme glucose six phosphatase. Here is also this is the enzyme which is going to be break down that phosphate group from the glucose six phosphate and uh, release the phosphate in organic phosphate that is release the phosphate from this. Glucose six phosphate and gives glucose molecule. These are the three irreversible steps of the glycolysis. They has to be reversible. They has to be reversed. They has to be reversed. That is the process of by the process of gluconeogenesis. This is all about the glycolysis pathway and its reversible irreversible steps get converted into reversible steps. And and I, as I told you, and this is the pyruvate. From pyruvate, we are going to synthesize the glucose and uh, from um, Fructose one comma six, this phosphate we are going to synthesize the glucose and glucose six phosphate. It is from that also we are going to synthesize the glucose. Here from the lactate, who we are going to form the second one. Second one is glucose synthesis of glucose from lactate. From the lactate. Here there is the lactate. Lactate is get converted into pyruvate first. That is, pyruvate is get converted into lactate in the glycolysis tenth step. Pyruvate is get converted into lactate with the help of enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. That is in the tenth step of the glycolysis. But here, from the lactate, we have to convert into the glucose. That is, lactate is first converted into pyruvate with the help of enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. Here ATP is utilized. Sorry, here NAD plus is converted into NADH plus H plus, and this pyruvate again it is get converted into oxaloacetate, oxalo, oxaloacetate with the help of enzymes. Pyruvate dehydrogenase. As I told you, this is the carboxylation reaction, and this oxaloacetate is get converted into PEP. That is, phosphoenol pyruvate. From the PEP, we are going to obtain glucose. We are going to obtain glucose. This is from the lactate. And third one, third one, glucose from synthesis of glucose from the glycerol. Synthesis of glucose from the glycerol. Here, glucose synthesis of glucose from the lactate, and here synthesis of glucose from the glycerol. Here, what happens? You know, glycerol, glycerol, it first convert into glycerol is cut first convert into glycerol three phosphate. Glycerol three phosphate. That the glycerol which is going to be convert into glycerol three phosphate with the help of enzyme glycerol kinase. Glycerol kinase. Here ATP is utilized and it gets converted into ADP. Okay. Again, 
what happens here that the third carbon of the glycerol the perfect group is going to be added here that's why glycerol is get converted into glycerol 3 phosphate and this glycerol 3 phosphate is get converted into ad bh ap that is dihydroxy dihydroxy acetone phosphate acetone phosphate with the help of enzyme g3c dehydrogenase that is glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase that the glycerol 3 phosphate is get converted into dihydroxy acetone phosphate that is dh in short for dh ap here here nad here nad is get converted nad plus is get converted into nadh plus h plus and again from this dh ap we can obtain glucose this is also intermediate of glycolysis from this also we can obtain glucose these are the three steps which are comes under the gluconeogenesis and fourth one we have to discuss about the fourth one fourth one is synthesis of glucose synthesis of glucose from from propionyl coa propio nil coa synthesis of glucose from the propionyl coa here that is this is the or chain fatty acid during the starvation during during the starvation during starvation during the starvation or chain fatty acid or chain fatty acid fatty acid gives glucose during fasting that is during the starvation or chain fatty acid are going to be give glucose molecule that is from the propionyl coa from propionyl coa we have to synthesis the glucose propionyl coa it first get converted into methyl melanyl coa methyl melanyl coa with the help of enzyme propionyl coa propio propionyl coa dehydrogenase which is also that the propionyl coa is get converted into methyl melanyl coa with the help of enzyme propionyl coa dehydrogenase this is the carboxylation reaction this is the carboxylation carboxylation as i told you carboxylation means the addition of carbon dioxide that is you have to remember we have to add a b and c that is we have to add atp and we have to add biotin as a coenzyme biotin and carbon dioxide because it is the carboxylation reaction and then this methyl melanyl coa it get converted into succinyl coa succinyl coa that methyl melanyl coa is get converted into succinyl coa and then this is the succinyl coa it is the intermediate of the citric acid cycle that succinyl coa again it is going to be converted into oxaloacetate oxaloacetate from oxaloacetate it get converted into pep from the pep we are going to obtain the glucose molecule that is propionyl coa it get converted the first into the methyl melanyl coa and here methyl melanyl coa it get converted into succinyl coa with the help of enzyme methyl with the help of enzyme methyl melanyl coa mutase methyl melanyl coa mutase methyl melanyl coa mutase this is all about the synthesis of the glucose from the propionyl coa then we are going to synthesis the glucose another one, another one process that is from the non carbohydrate in that non carbohydrate process we are having another one that is glucogenic amino acid from that glucogenic amino acid also we are going to synthesis the glucose and except leucine that is the leucine it is the 
uh, excessively that is the ketogenic amino acids. That's why that the exclusion from the glucogenic amino acids we are going to see the glucose. This is all about the gluconeogenesis. Thank you for the watching.